Today, I have a very interesting challenge ahead of me. Not because I'm gonna woodwork sitting down, but because I have to redo a dining table. A dining table that I designed and made a few years ago for my brother-in-law and my sister-in-law. And things have changed. You know, I mean, you look at this design, it, I think, looks good. But you have to think in terms of practicality for a busy family of four. In some cases, it may not make the most sense. And their situation changed when they moved from Denver back to Missouri and their house setup is a little bit different. So this was a occasional use dining table and it has become a daily use table at their house. And that means that there are certain physical things happening with it like bumping knees. Specifically, my sister-in-law says that when she comes in from the side like this, because the angle of the leg comes in, she often hits her knee on it and we couldn't get her to reenact it. She refuses to purposely hit her knee on the table, whatever. The cheese. You get the idea. Normally she does, and then, you know, the kids are gonna have issues with it too. This isn't necessarily a problem they have, but one thing I envision with tables like this is when you have a foot sticking out, you might have a situation where you could trip on that too. So we wanna solve these problems, and I could build a completely new base for it and just reuse the top, but how cool would it be if we could recycle as many parts as possible from this base into a new base that suits their needs? Now, what will it look like? Because these legs already they're very clearly what they wanna be, but what happens if we make some changes, change the angle on them? Can we turn this into something that actually looks pretty good, but most importantly, is more functional? Now, if you are not familiar with this table, go back into the archive. It's a, I believe it's just called Mid-Century Modern Dining Table. Go take a look at it if you wanna see how this was built, and then come back here and watch us destroy this, because we are going to probably take a reciprocating saw to it, to break this thing apart and try to salvage what we can from it. But you know what, I was just thinking about this. The last time I took a reciprocating saw or a saw to a nearly finished product and something made out of maple, I think was also Jason's fault back then with the credenza. Do you remember that? Do you remember, remember? remember that? <laughs> so we're gonna do it again. Uh, let's take this thing apart and see what we can do. Oh. oh, our names. Gotta retain that. 2019. All right, so I'm gonna do a little bit of cleanup here. Uh, this chunk, we're gonna do a cut here later and I'm gonna remove a portion of that. So I'm gonna hold off on worrying about that. I'm just gonna get this end grain material off. It's really not doing any damage at all, so that's good. Now just as a little point of information, a lot of people say there's no you know, point in putting glue on end grain because it doesn't do anything. Well, as you can see, it actually, you know, we don't have much glue out here, but where the glue was bonded, it actually was a pretty good hold. And in fact, it took some material away. So it probably is worth it when you do mortise and tenon joints to get some glue into that end grain. It's only gonna help as a bit of an insurance policy. Yeah, that one left a couple of nice divots in there. But the good thing is we should be covering this up with our new rail, at least I hope. Okay, and now I'm just gonna trim the dominoes with a flush trim saw. All right, and at this point, I'm just gonna use a sanding block because I just wanna flatten it out and get rid of any glue. Well, not the prettiest thing in the world, but it's flat. Now, the way this leg was originally in the table is at about a 15 degree angle, and there's also a taper uh, angle on the outside of the leg. So I'm gonna to try to correct that. I want to bring the leg so it's mostly vertical. Still, again, not sure how this is all gonna work out and what it's gonna look like, but that's where we're headed. So if we're going to make this happen, we need to now make a 90 degree cut. So I believe it's the outside surface we're gonna reference from, and we're gonna start making a 90 degree cut at the top and a 90 degree cut at the foot. In this way, it stands vertically. All right, so let's see how it works out. Oh, also, we're gonna use a stop block here when we make the second cut on each one of these legs, because even though this project was already built, we're now making new cuts. So it's almost like making a completely new table and all the same rules apply. So we wanna make sure that all four of these legs are exactly the same length.
On this one, we can use the chisel to clean that up a little bit, but again, you know, I really don't want to dig too much into there. Much of this is going to get covered, so anything that comes away easily, let's just knock it on out of there. And then I think we're going to switch to a hand plane. So I'm going to plane in from this side, which will lead to a cleaner cut at the edge here. I'm just using a smoother, and I'm going to work my way down. Just a little bit of cleanup with the sanding block. All right, so all we're doing now is putting the legs in their positions and trying to find where this bevel is. On this particular table, we made a really wide under bevel because it was cool. And uh, it's still cool, but now it's causing us to, <laughs> to make sure that this base is inside the perimeter of that inner uh, line that we have there. So we don't want to be right on the bevel. Um, we do want to be a little bit inside of it. So I think as long as we position these roughly inside there, what this is going to do is give us our leg-to-leg -leg distance for the long rail as well as the short rails. So something we're gonna to have to contend with is that we have an inside taper now. So when we do cut this rail, it's actually gonna have a miter on the end. We're gonna make a light cut there that will allow us to just match in perfectly to this. We can't change this angle here. Uh, so when we do take that measurement, we're going up to find the longest potential point between these legs and it's looking like about 52 and a half. So let's go for the short rail now. Turns out we have to both be on the same side to do it. Do you wanna come over here? Let me go, now you come over here. No, that's all right. I'll come over here. <laughs> and that looks like a straight up 26. So this is looking pretty good so far. We're going to reuse the legs. We're reusing the top, of course. And now we have a couple of rails that we cut. Now, these short rails, I don't think these are going to be good for anything here. They're, they're too short. And if anything, everything is getting a little bigger with the base. So these will go into the pile in the back and will be used for something else later on. The two long rails, they are not gonna be good for the long rails of the new base, but they might be useful for the short rails, which need to be cut down anyway. So let's see what these will do here. We have plenty of material to make that cut, All right? So we'll just look at this guy, pick whatever we think is the best portion of the grain, and we'll be able to reuse these. We're also gonna use this as a model for the width and the thickness, because we will have to get some new material just to make a couple of short rails. But that's not that bad considering what we're doing to this table. We're reusing most of it. So I feel pretty good about that. I think the reality here is I told Nicole that we were gonna sell wood, but I just really wanted a big supply of wood so that we could use it. Yeah. And I put prices on it and I pretend to go shopping. <laughs> you guys take credit cards? Cause that's all I got. Yeah. Uh, but we only got two pieces of walnut left. So uh, that, one, that, means. that one looks good. Then we gotta go shopping again? Yes. Yay. Now the long rails are gonna span between this portion of the leg on the inside face. When we straightened up and lost our 15 degree angle, uh, we basically squared up the outside. So if we take a square to the outside face of the leg, we should see at least pretty close to square. We're on the table saw surface here because that's pretty flat. Um, now on the inside, we need to know what that angle is because whatever this angle is gets cut as a miter on the end of our long rails. And at this point, I could probably go back to the plan and figure out the theoretical number, but theory is out the window right now. What I need to know is what this leg is sitting at here in space. So I've got my adjustable bevel gauge, and I'm just gonna push it up against the bottom of the leg until we're nice and even. Okay. Now that angle is the angle I'm gonna use on the ends of my top long rails. Well, not top, there's no bottom rails. The long rails will get this cut at the end, so it's slightly off from 90. All right, now to get this angle just right, we're gonna use the bevel gauge itself. You could also mark the line on a easy to see workpiece, line that up with your laser. Uh, but it's actually pretty easy to just get this guy close. And then I could bring my blade down and just see, am I where I need to be? 
with respect to the, the blade. So for the joinery, we used dominoes before. You could even see some leftovers and cross sections of the dominoes there. Uh, there's no reason we can't use them again. The real nice thing about dominoes is they're such a snug fit that if you have to do something like this, they actually serve as a real nice patch as long as it's going to be covered by the work. And we should have no problem with that here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use uh, 10 by 50s and start plunging away. I like to make up a story stick whenever I have to do repeated domino locations. I also have to remember that the rails are not flush on the outside. The rails are slightly inset, so I've got to account for that with my domino fence setting. The rails get a little chamfer on the bottom edge to match the existing rails and then everything gets sanded, including the puppy bite marks. Here we go. Now for the glue up. We'll start by assembling the shorter side rails and the legs. Nice and square, yeah. glue dries, we can come back and bring the two sub-assemblies together with the long rails. Hand is not a hammer! Now another change we're going to talk about here is the finish. Now this is not something we necessarily had to do, but in talking with my brother-in-law and my sister-in-law, it seems like the old finish, which was Rubio, specifically we put Rubio Walnut on here, um, that is not quite durable enough. And this is one of the things that I'm kind of glad I don't do client work anymore because the expectations that people have of finishes uh, it's hard to know where their head is necessarily. So while I'm okay with the dining table finished with Rubio, that doesn't mean that everybody else is. So trying to predict what they expect in terms of durability, the final look, things like that, it's not totally clear. So I kind of, you know, talking to Jason and putting two and two together, I think I know what she's looking for. She's looking for more of a durable film finish that's a little bit more like a classic finish you might find on, God forbid, a piece of furniture in a store but we can still do that. There's ways to do that with a decent amount of protection that not only look great, offer protection, but it's fairly easy to apply if you have the equipment. So I'm going to go back to a finish that I used to use routinely. I would buy this in five gallon jugs uh, and use it that way because I would go through so much of it. Um, that's a Sherwin-Williams product. It's their catalyzed lacquer, medium rub. It's kind of like a satiny um, sort of sheen to it. I think that's what she's looking for. So that is what we're gonna to apply to this table. So we're gonna give it a sanding. This is a couple years old at this point. The finish um, probably won't take too much to bring it up and get down to bare wood. And then we could apply a nice lacquer finish to it. A cured Rubio finish sands pretty easily, but we're starting with 120 grit and finishing at 180. We finished the bottom first and then moved on to the top. It's been a long time since I sprayed this finish and it'll be a long time before I do it again, but it all came back to me pretty quickly. In between coats, we sanded the surface with a little bit of 320 just to remove any surface texture. And we applied a total of three coats. All right, so after the finish was applied, we just basically reattached the base to the top, and here's what we have. I gotta say, I am so pleasantly surprised with how this turned out. This should not have worked as well as it did. I actually think this looks pretty cool. It looks like a different version, definitely in a similar family as the previous one, but clearly some major differences. We got lucky with a couple of different things with the inside taper. Normally tapers are on the inside of a leg and the way the legs were built the first time, once we just kind of straightened them up, that taper went to the inside, giving us a nice straight outer surface for the leg 
and I think it kind of looks great. I don't think it necessarily looks better than the other table or worse, it's just different. And ultimately, it will now function the way that everybody wants it to function. Same thing with the finish, you know, it's not like the other finish was bad, that was just a Rubio Monocoat finish. They wanted something different, and now they have something different. So I think that's the key here. If you were someone who built the previous version of this table, don't feel bad about it. We're not saying it was bad, it just wasn't right for them. And it's so cool that we were able to just add two more pieces of material for those long rails and then recycle everything else back into it to essentially return this table in a much more functional, for them, a much more functional version. So super stoked about this and I hope they are gonna be happy with it as well. So thanks for watching.